Okay, so it's the afternoon on February 25th. And, uh, anyway, uh, last weekend, uh, I found, uh, information about a visit uh, by, uh, uh, Dirt Wilders to, uh, uh, to Australia and about, uh, the, uh, vociferous, uh, protest, uh, against his visit. And, um, anyway, I listened to one of the speeches that uh, Wilders made while he was in Australia and uh, I listened to an interv him being interviewed on an Australian TV program and uh, and I found some other people uh, I found this uh, lady uh, from Austria uh, who's been uh, uh, prosecuted uh, under their uh, blas there's a, apparently a blasphemy law in Austria where you can't uh, speak disparagingly about someone's religion. So if she got prosecuted under that law because she made note of the fact that uh, Mohammed uh, married a six-year-old and uh, had sex with her when she was nine. And uh, then I uh, did a little bit more research and. Uh, about uh, related people and found uh, this guy who's, uh, I believe his last name is Bell. But I'll post links to all these things so you can check them out yourself. But uh, this Bell guy uh, basically uh, said that he was working on a documentary for this, on the building of this mega mosque in, uh, in the south. He was going to make a documentary about how uh, the Southerners were all upset and were supposedly uh, uh, you know, being bigoted about the whole situation. And then this guy came across a uh, Coptic Christian, and he asked the Coptic uh, Christian uh, what his response was to uh, the Arab Spring. He said, well, hey, uh, my family, you know, might be killed because the Islamists might take control and then that might be bad for my family, you know. So, uh, okay, it's uh, February 27th. And I wanted to follow up on the video that I made earlier and mention some uh, specific names of people that I didn't mention in the other video, but I uh, referred to them. But it'd be good to say their explicit names. So, uh, in addition to uh, Gert Wilders, uh, who was uh, recently visiting Australia, also it's worth noting that. Um, there's people like uh, Aeon Hersey Alley, who was a uh, political politician in uh, the Netherlands also, and then she came to America. And uh, right now she has an association with the American Enterprise Institute. Um, but one reason for that, I believe, is because uh, no uh, more liberal group would help Basically, she needs to run class security, and so no other group would help, uh, you know, pay for that type of stuff. So we have to have the AEI do it. Um, and then uh, Theo Van Gogh. Uh, a descendant of uh, Vincent Van Gogh, um, who made a film with Han Hersey Alley uh, called uh, Submission basically uh, criticized the uh, treatment of women in Islamic uh, culture. And then he got uh, killed uh, for the privilege of that in response by some Islamic nutbag. And then we have uh, Winston Churchill, who uh, said this about Islam. He said, uh, How dreadful are the curses which Moham Mohammedanism lays on its Voltaire's 
Besides the fanatical frenzy, which is as dangerous in a man as hydrophobia in a dog, there is this fearful fan fatalistic apathy. The effects are apparent in many countries. In provident habits, slovenly systems of agriculture, sluggish methods of commerce, and insecurity of property exist wherever the followers of the prophet rule or live. A degraded sensualism deprives the life of its grace and refinement. The next of its dignity and sanctity. The fact that in Mohammedan law every woman must belong to some man as his absolute property, either as a child or a wife or a concubine, must delay the final execution of slavery must delay the final extinction of slavery until the faith of Islam has ceased to be a great power among men. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Winston Churchill, huh? He sounds like a Islamophobe and a racist. <laughs> Thousands become the brave and loyal development of those who follow it. No stronger retrograde force exists in the world. Far from being moribund, Mohammedanism is a militant and proselyting faith. That's for damn sure. It has already spread throughout Central Africa, raising fearless warriors at every step. And were it not that Christianity is sheltered in the strong arms of science, the science against which it had vainly struggled, the civilization of modern Europe might fall, as fell the civilization of ancient Rome. So that's from Winston Churchill. And then I found uh, Elizabeth Sabatich Wolf, an Austrian a lady, who, uh, because of her comments about Mohammed uh, being a uh, pedophile, uh, marrying a s Mohammed marrying a six-year-old, having sex with her at nine. Pretty sure that makes you a pedophile, huh? And a child rapist, Mohammed. Um, anyway, she basically said that in the public, and then this uh, socialist newspaper in Austria sent a reporter to spy on her and record her uh, talk... Uh, uh, secretly, and uh, then they passed that recording over to the uh, Austrian authorities, and then they prosecuted her, and uh, she was prosecuted uh, successfully, and she's trying to going to try to appeal to a European uh, Human Rights Commission or some such thing. But uh, anyway, um, the Austrian blasphemy law, as translated, reads uh, like this: uh, Whoever publicly a person or thing that is the object of veneration of a domestic existing church or religious society, or demeans a doctrine, a lawful custom, or a lawful estab establishment of such a church or religious community may be may or ridiculed, behavior under which his is liable to arouse legitimate offense with imprisonment of up to six months or a fine of up to 360 daily rates to be punished. Yeah. So I guess... You know, you hear about the uh, the Inquisition. Uh, wasn't there a sketch on Monty Python about not expecting the Spanish Inquisition? Well, apparently, the uh, the Inquisition is still in effect in uh, in some European countries with these blasphemy laws uh, and uh, also laws against uh, so-called hate speech and so-called uh, racism. Uh, and it's worth noting that uh, a group called the Organization of Islamic Corporation, uh, and it's kind of uh, set up to be kind of a oh, kind of a shadow or mirror of the UN, with uh, Islamic uh, countries uh, who are members of it, and they have so-called human rights, but then they redefine words like racism uh, from their traditional definition. So I found a man named uh, Stephen Coughlin, who's an intelligence analyst, 
who was talking about the uh, Cairo Declaration of Human Rights in Islam, put out by the Organization of Islamic Corporation. And uh, if you dig deeper into their uh, documents, this OIC documents, you find that they state that uh, contemporary forms of racism are based on discrimination and disparagement on a cultural rather than biological basis. So the OIC and its uh, cohorts, such as uh, the uh, uh, Council of American Islamic Relations, uh, CARE, whatever their name is, uh, basically Islamic Advocacy Group here, called, uh, but whose acronym sounds like CARE, uh, in America. Basically, these people think that uh, racism, whenever you talk smack about Muhammad or about how he was a pedophile and about how he was a murderous warmonger who killed people for not converting to Islam, Remember you, uh, or do you talk about how the Quran mentions that uh, heathens should have their skin burned off in hell and regrown and burned off and regrown and burned off and regrown and burned off? If you mention any of that stuff, uh, basically let's say you're a racist and you're an Islamophobe. And uh, I agree with uh, Gert Wilders where he says that a lot of people who are members of the Islamic religion are more moderate and uh, thankfully so. Thankfully they're not all uh, they don't all have the morals of Muhammad but it's too bad that uh, in Islam they still hold up Muhammad as being the highest uh, example the most perfect example of someone you should follow you know uh, Muhammad was the best example kind of similar to what Buddhists do. It's all about a cult with Buddha. It's kind of all about a cult of personality. Yet another cult of personality but in this case if you try to say that the emperor has no clothes about Islam, you're called a racist and a hater and a Islamophobe. Uh, people like uh, Amy Goodman would say that, uh, the host of uh, Democracy Now! Uh, program, TV and radio program. And there's plenty of others who've been liberals, who've been uh, sucked in by the propaganda, essentially funded by Saudi Arabia. And, um, you know, conservative Muslims, uh, Muslim Brotherhood people, Hamas, uh, basically anybody who can glom onto the history of, you know, coming out of oppression, uh, you know, getting a, doing away with slavery, uh, that was racism, uh, you know, discrimination against people uh, like uh, the Native Americans, what happened to them, uh, I mean, I should say American Indians. Native American is not a term I prefer to use because anybody who's born here is native, so American Indians, I should say. Um, so that's that situation. And then I came across uh, Eric Allen Bell, who was uh, working on a documentary for uh, an Islamic uh, mega mosque in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. The Islamic Center of Murfreesboro. And he was uh, basically writing for MichaelMoore.com and for the Daily Coast, a uh, liberal website. And uh, then he got uh, fired from the Daily Coast because he basically, Mr. Bell encountered uh, a Coptic Christian cab driver who was telling him that when uh, Egypt uh, gets taken over by the Muslim Brotherhood, that that will be trouble for the Coptic Christians. Okay? And then he said, Oh, what's, what's a Coptic Christian? So Eric Allen Bell may not be, you know, highly educated because if he didn't know about Coptic Christians before he was making a documentary, he might have been a little bit, a little bit of a, you know, uneducated person on that front. But and supposedly he switched from being a liberal to a conservative and whatever. But I, you know, I'm still a liberal. Uh, um, I'm still a socialist, but I'm an anti-authoritarian uh, socialist uh, and an anti-authoritarian liberal. So that means that I consider uh, freedom of speech to be more important than uh, freedom from offense. Okay. Uh, then uh, Obama, during his uh, UN speech, he said uh, the future must not. In his recent UN speech uh, said the future must not belong to those who slander the Prophet of Islam. And uh, so I voted for Obama twice. 
and I think it's good that he was elected. And if you examine the views of people like George W. Bush, you'll find that he made similar uh, pandering statements about Islam, you know. After 9-11, he had some participation with activities that claimed, uh, oh, everyone believes in the same God, and uh, Islam wants peace, and it's not true Islam. Uh, when uh, terrorists fly planes into buildings, that's not, not true Islam. Yeah, but sadly it is. So Obama, on that particular point, is just naive. But just because there's liberal dumb shits, for example, in the Unitarian Church, who claim that Mohammed was an advocate for social justice, uh, and just because there's other ones who say that uh, criticism of Islam is uh, equivalent to racism, just because there's uh, dumb shit liberals doesn't mean I'm not gonna I'm gonna stop being one. So I'm basically a a 9/11 liberal, and uh, maybe Bill Maher coined that term on his show, uh, Real Time with Bill Maher. Uh, but uh, you know, here's some other 9/11 liberals I can think of. Um, uh, Bill, well, in addition to Bill Maher, we have uh, Salman Rushdie. Uh, we have Christopher, the f the former Christopher, or the I should say the late Christopher Hitchens, uh, Sam Harris, Richard Dawkins, uh, maybe Stephen Fry. Uh, the Danish cartoonists. I mean, are there any uh, conservatives in in Denmark? Uh, probably not that many. The people who write for the uh, Charlie Hebdo newspaper. Uh, they're probably not all that conservative. But you know, you think also think about uh, the Monty Python group. The the men who made uh, the film Life of Brian. Most of them are probably not all that uh, conservative, so to speak. Uh, and so, uh, but anyway. I was reading about uh, this thing in uh, the UK about uh, how they have a, had a law that made it so a policeman could fine a person if they offended someone else, uh, but used uh, insulted someone else. So the the police, the nutball police in in Britain, were going around arresting people for, for example, calling a horse gay, or for putting a sign on someone's bedroom window that uh, religion is a myth. Uh, or even for putting Bible verses on a TV in a bar. And, uh, you know, I'm an atheist, but if some bar owner wants to put Bible verses on TV, nobody should say, oh, you can't do that. <sighs> You're offending people. And I don't think people have a right to not be offended. That's not a right you have. Because the right of free speech depends on the right to be offended not being a right. Okay? So, if someone says something offensive, you don't have a right to say, tell them to shut up. You do have a right to respond vociferously, in kind, and to say what you think. But uh, if we're going to have an open society and democracy, we have to have a situation where everybody gets to speak, regardless of how nutty or stupid their ideas are. And uh, maybe, sometimes, occasionally, we might find that what might be, at first glance, a nutty and stupid idea may actually be a value. Because people can change their opinion. Uh, for example, when I was a strong-believing Mormon, I came across this uh, British uh, science fiction show. Not science fiction. A British comedy called uh, Are You Being Served? And, uh, anyway, this uh, British comedy, Are You Being Served, I was so offended at it because the show is chock full of double entendres. And, uh, then, after I left Mormonism, I found it to be one of my favorite uh, British comedies. And it's uh, an excellently structured program, very funny, very well written, and it's one of my favorites. And, uh, so, that's just one example. But, uh, back in the day, when I was a strong believer Mormon, I was said, well, hey, uh, that's an insulting program. <laughs> Let's ban it. Let me write a letter to my public radio station and say, this offend me. So, see? See how we can change our opinions?
and it's I'm unlikely to change my opinion of people like Ayn Rand, who worshipped at the feet of a 